Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about uh, Rego expression non-capturing groups. I'm going to open up my web browser on my website, javacjava.com, select menu and then regex tutorials. I'll scroll down here to regex non-capturing groups. Now, a non-capturing group allows you to group a pattern or token without the regex engine automatically assigning a group number. Now, there are many reasons for using non-capturing groups. Some common uses are faster search results, inline modifiers, or embedded flag expressions. And don't worry about those. I haven't discussed those yet, but I will today. Uh, and excluding patterns from the uh, group method results. So, and that's the group, you know, where you have the overloaded version of it where you're specifying a number or whatnot. So at this point, I would like to take a moment to make you aware that the question mark meta character is just about the most versatile of all the meta characters and where it is placed in a regex can make a dramatic difference on search result. So that being said, it'll also be the most confusing. I, I assure you that, especially when you see whatever context that it can be used in if you get advanced, you know, on some of this stuff there. So, um, Non-capturing groups use the same syntax as capturing groups, only you must include the question mark colon just inside of the opening parentheses. Right, so you got your opening parentheses and you got your question mark colon, and then your regular expression and then your closing parentheses. So in, in this one right here, right, we just got an ordinary capturing group, right, two capturing groups, right? Here is capturing group number one and capturing group number two. So two regular capturing groups, one searching for singular lizard, right, because we've got the negation S here on this character class following that, and the other searching for plural lizards, right? F to lizard, um, followed by an S, okay? Now let's take a look at non-capturing group, right? This one won't be assigned a group number. So we can do essentially like the same thing right here, but we're not concerned about, you know, counts of like, for example, uh, non or singular lizards versus plural lizards. So we'll just start our non-capturing group out with the question mark colon, and then we're searching for either lizard or lizards, right? Now let's, um, let's take a little moment to introduce you guys to the asterisk quantifier, right? Which means zero or more. And I'm gonna discuss quantifiers more in, in the next following tutorials there. And I haven't gone over the asterisk one yet, but uh, I like to you know subtly introduce these things here to you guys. So, but anyway, so we got our non-capturing group right here, right? Followed by uh, L-I-Z-A-R, right? And then D, um, without, D ha this has to have an S right here at this point until we put this, uh, this asterisk right here. This asterisk means that we're going to have zero or more. So this basically will say, okay, there can be zero or more S. So this can be either lizard or lizards. This does exactly what this does up here. And then we can take it one step further and we can basically apply that uh, zero or more quantifier, the asterisk right there, right to the S there without even making a character class. So the non-capturing group with optional S at the end. And I like to show examples on these, on using these things rather than just say, hey, here's a non-capturing group, but let's let's talk a little bit more about how they're they're valuable there. And, and um, in order to do some, I'll discuss inline modifiers, which are also known as embedded flag expressions. Now, if you've been watching my tutorial series thus far, then you have seen me demonstrate the case insensitive inline modifier, right? Which is a, inside a pair of parentheses, question mark I for ignore case, or case insensitive, one or the other, but it does the same thing. So consider the following statements here. We've got pattern P equals pattern compile. Here's our regular expression, the, and we're using the overloaded version of it and you know passing in the case insensitive um, constant flag right here, okay? Then in this statement, we have pattern P, pattern compile, and then we have the inline modifier Right, and then we have a capturing group, the. Now these two statements are identical and all instances of the will return true regardless of their case. Now what if we have a regex that we uh, only want a portion of the search pattern to be case insensitive, right? Because when we specify this, the whole entire search pattern, which I've got it really simple as the, will be you know, case insensitive. Same thing with this up here. But what if we only wanted a little bit? Well, the answer is there are a few ways to accomplish this feat, but non-capturing group make, groups make this task simple. 
So consider this statement here, pattern p equals new pattern compile. And let's say, for example, we've got an XML flag, right? And then we've got tag, I should say. So we've got an XML tag. And our XML tag needs to be lowercase. It can't be uppercase. And then our closing XML tag, right? Which is, you know, of course, the forward slash right here, right? And then XML. So our closing tag has to be lowercase as well. And of course, you wouldn't do this in XML. You'd have, probably have this something labeled as like, you know, answer or agreement or whatever, right? But inside of these XML tags, they, you will we'll create a non-capturing group. And I'm going to sandwich this modifier, I, right in between the question mark and the colon. And what that, that'll specify is that this non-capturing group with yes, with this string literal in here, this whole entire yes can be either upper or lower. This just doesn't apply to this first Y. This applies to Y, E, and S, all three characters. So, And just to reiterate, in the example above, I sandwiched the I inline modifier between the non-capturing group, right? Question mark, I, colon. So the following token yes can be a mix of both upper and lower case letters. And I'll demonstrate that in the code here. But here's a quick list of the inline modifiers and their equivalent pattern class constants, right? So question mark I equals pattern dot case insensitive. And I haven't gone over any of these others yet. I briefly discussed dot all in uh, off topic in one of my tutorials there. Um, comments, I haven't gone over comments. Uh, Multi-line, uh, don't worry about all this stuff right now. Dot all, basically dot all is an easy one there. Now, of course we know the dot character, dot meta character is basically every character except for a new line. Um, there, so basically by specifying the dot all, it will actually include new line in the uh, for the dot wildcard character. But anyway, these are really kind of beside the point. The whole entire purpose of this tutorial is non-capturing groups, and then a little sub portion of it is inline modifiers. There, so let's go ahead and come down here and highlight this code, and I'll go over some important stuff today on this. So, Control C to copy, or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen, and I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't create one really fast by right-clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD next and finish. It's just that easy. Let's open it up. If you're new to my tutorials, type in Java C. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash, cd short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory with the md command called java, and I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. I'm going to make another directory here, and I'm going to call this uh, regex non-capturing groups. All right, cd, I'm going to hit tab, so it'll pull up fast there, and I'm going to notepad regex non Capturing groups.java. That's the name of my source code file, also known as a compilation unit. All right, let's go ahead and paste this stuff in here. Come up here and save. So fairly simple right off the bat, um, importing the Java util regex package there. And single class in here, main method entry point. First statement, I'm doing uh, just creating a match a reference variable m, setting that equal to null. And what we're going to do first, and basically all this code just basically repeats itself with various different uh, regular expressions and then matchers to here as well. So um, I'm basically compiling the regular expression here, and this is what we talked about before. We're going to have a lowercase XML tag, and then we've got our non-capturing group right here, which starts off right there, and then YES, right? So we're going to test for any values of yes in between the XML tag here, okay? All right, so, and these are going to be the first two tests. And you'll notice that there is no inline modifier in between, you know, the question mark and that. So this is just basically like, okay, um, just run these tests and show you this, how this works here. So let's clear our screen, Java C, Java to compile, oh, clear our screen again. Let's go ahead and run that. And so, right up to this, this statement right here, first two tests, okay? 
So the first one matched absolutely, right? Because, well, no, the second one matched absolutely because we have a lowercase yes and it matched there. So this first one did not match. So, um, so that's basically where we're coming from to begin with this, this tutorials. Okay, now, can we make this case insensitive? Because the capturing groups, non-capturing groups are all pretty straightforward. You know, we could have even left this out completely there if we really wanted to do, you know, just something like, like that, right? Um, but, you know, uh, we, we want to accomplish more by including our, our non-capturing groups. So, in the next test here, we're just going to be basically, you know, this regular expression right here, and we're in a non-capturing group, and we've stuck in the inline modifier for ignore case there, right? And that'll apply to yes there. All right, just reiterating what I'd gone over with over there. And so we're going to test that against yes uppercase, yes lowercase, a little mix of, of four little tests here there, and that'll end with this particular statement right there. So here's what we get on, on doing that, right? So you can see we get our matches. Yes, 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 and yes. You know, four tests on non-capturing groups with inline modifiers. So that, that's how that works there. So that's how we can test. Okay, you know, if we had a you know, particular failure in here where, for example, this was like XML, the whole entire thing is not going to, you know, I'll just come up here and save and show you that, right? We're only gonna get three results on that. Oh. Jesus, what am I doing? Okay, so yeah, see we only get three results here on those four tests there. So, you know, we're, we're getting exactly what we want. We want the yes sandwiched in between there to be, you know, case insensitive, but we want the XML flags and, or tags um, to be case sensitive. All right, we'll just come up here, save that, put this back here. All right, there's our four test back. All right, so now I'd like to build on, I'd like to build on some of the, the other tutorials here. Um, specifically capturing groups, right? So at this point in time where we're right here, so I'm gonna change up my uh, regular expression to include capturing groups and back references. So if you haven't watched those tutorials, I highly recommend you do, otherwise this is going to be a little bit confusing there. So, but if you have watched them, just stick with me here and I'll show you how, to, how we do this here. So um, right up here, we've got XML and we've got XML. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and turn this particular, these things that are similar about this into a capturing group, right? So XML, and of course, this will um, this will be group number one, right? And then so we're going to use our back reference number one over here, just sandwiched in where we would just normally see XML, okay? Because that's going to be repeating patterns. So that's our back reference um, over here, and that's demonstrating our capturing group there. All right. So um, on that particular result, what we get is. Let me Pull this down here. Well, let's see, where am I now? Okay, so we're, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just going to, I'm just going to ax all this stuff here and then we'll just kind of move along as we go here. Let's, let's come up here and save this to our screen. Let's recompile, rerun, right? Okay, so that way it's a little bit cleaner in the code and cleaner, easier to see there. All right, so um, as you can see, I've got three occurrences of the, of the, you know, basically doing the same thing here with this, but I've only got two finds up here. So in the first instance that we've got up here, it went ahead and found this, right? And I'm gonna come down here and comment this out just to show you because it's hard to see which one is actually, you know, causing the problem here. Because then we get down to this, this line right here, I'm displaying that string literal there, so. Let's come back up here, recompile this. Uh, let's clear our screen, rerun it. Okay, so using that, we, we definitely find that. So that's all good and well there. All right, so let's kind of expand on this, this whole capturing group thing a little bit more there, right? So we also have, um, we also have this, this trailing uh, trailing basically greater than symbol there or caret there, right? So we can 
we can even remove it from this up here and now we got that particular capturing group right there right and so you can see we come back with the same result right there using the back reference and capturing group along with the non non capturing group with the inline modifier okay so we're starting to get a little bit more complicated now you might be thinking to yourself can we take this to another step right and use um use the quantifier there and specifically the asterisk quantifier and so could we for example um, do um, this is of course the zero or more right and applying that to the forward slash in there could we get a match by then just simply saying okay um, back reference one okay and so let's come up here and save this. Let's clear our screen. Let's recompile actually. And we run it there. All right, so, excuse me. As you can see, we still got two results. So this failed out right here. And the reason why it failed out is what you have to understand with back references here, when it finds this particular back reference, the next one that it's going to put in there basically or match it to or repeat the pattern is, is exactly the first one it finds. So when we do something like this down here, the first one that it's actually going to find is this right here, okay? That's what that, that little token will match right there. So that's what's stored into group number one for its memory. So when it comes along and it says, okay, um, now I've got this, the only difference here is this backslash right there, which by the way, this particular regular expression right here would match this, but our back reference that's stored right from here doesn't match it there. So we cannot do stuff like this. And I just kind of want to reiterate that, you know, that was something that I didn't go over in my back references tutorial, but when the opportunity comes up, I like to go over stuff that you can and can't do, okay? So anyway, um, that pretty much covers like capturing groups, back references, non-capturing groups, and inline modifiers, all in just these couple little ones right here and here. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is, all right, so you might be thinking to yourself, well, geez, what if I want a capturing group and I want to make it case insensitive right in the middle of something or other, right? Can we do that? And the answer is yes. And here's how we can do that. So using the standard inline modifier syntax, right? We basically, for this one here, walk you through it there, we've got our opening tag XML and then followed by our inline modifier for ignore case, right? And then we've got a capturing group called with yes, right? And then how we turn that off is we just simply use the inline modifier and we put the minus or the negative I and that shuts off case insensitivity for the whole rest of, the, of this. So this now becomes case sensitive. Right, so case sensitive, case insensitive, everything in between here and here, whatever's in there can then be um, case sensitive and case insensitive too as well. As a matter of fact, if you didn't want that capturing group as well, you can do something like this, for example, okay? And, but you can see, you know, with, with the capturing groups right there, we can do the same thing too as well. So let's go ahead and just save this and Come up here, recompile, rerun. As you can see, we get the same results whether we've got it inside of a capturing group, whether we've got it inside of a capturing group or outside of a capturing group. And this one was just checking on that, and that was checking on that. So um, hopefully it all makes sense. And you guys are like, oh, okay, I can see we can do some really cool stuff there. You know, this is essentially the same thing as this right there. Um, so, but anyway. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and get rid of that. I uh, don't really have any final thoughts on this particular tutorial, so, but that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.